Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good. Welcome to church today. Um, before I jump into the more formal announcements, I do sound a little different today, if you couldn't tell already. I have a sinus infection. So, I'm taking precautions anyway. So, what's going to happen? Because even though they say it's a sinus infection, I'm a little nervous about it not being. Um, Pastor Linda has agreed to take over the second half of the service, so she will be presiding over communion and serving with you. Thank you very much. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, also, I want to welcome Grace today. She's filling in at the last second, so thank you, Grace, for your helpfulness. Karen is experiencing some back pain and is not able to play, so Grace graciously filled in for us. So thank you and welcome. We're glad to have you back. Uh, congratulations go to Pat and Rod Roloff, who won the bench that was raffled off to support our 150th anniversary committee. Also, there is youth group tonight. Um, Pastor Linda, what's the scope of that tonight? Six o'clock is middle school. So, Seven o'clock is high school. And we are talking about, we're going to talk about being upside down. Okay, so six o'clock youth group tonight for middle school. Seven o'clock for high school. And we're going to talk about being upside down. That sounds like fun. Come and figure it out. Awesome. Uh, also, this year, we are having a Blessing of the Pets service, and that'll be Monday, October 4th at 645 in the evening. Uh, so feel free to bring your pets for a blessing. We'll meet outside under the portico. If it's really terrible weather, we're going to come on inside. I ask that if you bring reptilian things like snakes and lizards, frogs, and fuzzy tarantula things, put them in a cage. And when I come to you, don't let me see it because they kind of freak me out a little. <laughs> anyway, enough on that. Uh, I will be starting some classes on Lutheranism uh, starting Sunday, October 10th, and that'll happen after worship. Um, and that's, these are classes for new members as well as anybody who wants to refresh um, your learning on Lutherans and the history and the church and all that good stuff. Uh, we'll have that up in the gathering area, and coffee and donuts will be provided. It'll start at about 10.45, go to 11.30, and you'll leave here a lot smarter and maybe meet some new people, so that would be great. Also, we're going to start something on October 20th, which is just a few weeks away. On Wednesday evenings, I'm going to be offering painting classes for people of all ages and skill levels. Uh, we will be using Bible passages as our inspiration for what we're going to be painting. Uh, more info will be coming in the bullet, or in, there is information in your bulletin, but also be on the lookout for a list of materials that you'll want to purchase before you come to the class. Um, and it should be a whole lot of fun. And it doesn't matter if you're artistic or not, come and give it a shot. It'll be a lot of fun. Are there any other announcements for the good of the cause? All right, seeing none, let us share the peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Please share that peace with one another. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins, the God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 370, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. We lift these words of prayer. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to please be seated, and I believe Pastor Linda has the children's message. I would encourage all the children to come forward at this time. Have a seat on our front step. Very good. Good morning. How's everybody? Woohoo! Okay, pretty low key this morning, aren't we? You didn't have your donut, that little sugar kick this morning? No? Everybody awake? All right, yay! Good morning, good morning. I would like to share a couple things with you. Have you ever seen anything like this? Hmm? You ever seen, I have three, I think, let's see, we have three family groups, so would you like to hold that? Just share it with your brother. Ooh. So let's keep them in family groups so we're not passing them a little bit. You guys can check that out. You guys check that out. Okay. So does anybody know what that is? What is it? A door stopper. It could be. Are they heavy, light? What do you think? Well, door stoppers are, but this particular one is pretty heavy. Anybody else? What do you think it is? No guesses? It has nothing to do with my hands. I was just being silly. Anybody know? What is it shaped like? A shoe? All right, all right. Well, I, 
want you to just think about that for a minute. Just hold on to it. Don't drop it on your toe. Our gospel lesson this morning is from Mark chapter 9. And Pastor D will be sharing that in her sermon and talking about that message. But I want to share a couple verses with you all from that. And then we'll talk about what you have in your hand. I wonder if any of these folks out there know what that is. So John said to him, this was Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. And Jesus went on to say, Don't stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me. And he goes on and says, For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will be by no means lose the reward. So, okay. So what was happening? John and the disciples looked at Jesus and said, Jesus, we're sharing all about you. We're one of the group. We're one of the 12. But you know what? There's these other people out there. They're doing it too. Just hold on to that thought a minute. This, can I have, can I see my, my foot, my door stop? Okay, so, woo, see, so what, what is this, friends? What is it? Come on, go back in time a little bit. It's a shoe cobbler tool. Yeah, well, to, to shape a shoe around. So back in the day, Somebody that made shoes by hand or needed to do something with them, they would shape the shoe around these heavy-duty um, molds. We'll call them that. Something like this, do you think it can be used for anything else? Could it be used to, not really, could it be used to stir a cake mix? Not particularly. It could be used as a doorstop, you said that, but not the little one, it might not hold. But this has one single purpose. And we didn't even really know what it was. It was for like a long time ago. But it has one single purpose. What Jesus was telling the disciples is that, that the disciples were like, hey, we're the only ones that can do this. But Jesus was saying, no, you're not like just this one single solitary only one of you that can do one thing, all of my people can share God's love. Everyone can tell the story of, of my power and of my might and of my love and of my grace. But they were acting kind of like they were the only ones that could do it, kind of like this mold of a shoe. So what I would like you to remember today is that we all Jesus is telling us we all have this wonderful voice we can use to shine Jesus' love in the world. You are all unique and special, and you don't have one sole purpose. You can do lots of things. One of them is, indeed, to share God's love and to know your love. So let's pray for a moment. Loving God, we give you thanks that you have called all of us to share your grace and your love in the world. May we be molded and shaped to do that um, out of your grace and out of, of the message that we read about you and the Bible. Bless these children and walk with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so here's the story. If you are a squirrely, like under third grade, and, you, and parents, they want to come out with me and read and color, read a Bible story in color, you may do so. I'm going to ask the older students um, to stay in worship, and we will have Sunday school after worship, okay? If you're carrying one of my molds, let's just set it down here. Could you do that for me? Okay. Nice job. So you can sit down, and... You may go back to your seats or come out with me, or if you have a little brother or sister and you want to accompany them, we can do that too.
Our first lesson today is from Numbers 11. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrance of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them, that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom, as a nurse carries a sucking child, to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of the meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Elad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. We will now read responsively Psalm 19. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and reviews the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servants from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Our second reading is from James 5, verses 13 to 20. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, 
anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to the ninth chapter of St. Mark, beginning with the 38th verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter the life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to please be seated. <clears throat> True or false? An adult human body contains about 41 teaspoons of salt. If you're in the medical field, I'm not going to let you answer. What do you think? You think it's true? Anybody else think it's true? A few people? All right. Anybody think it's false? It's true. It's true. Did you also know that one serving of potato chips, because who eats one? Potato chips, which are very delicious in their crispy, crunchy, potato wonderfulness, contain approximately 7% of the recommended salt intake per day for humans. I usually exceed that. Have you ever tried those low or no salt potato chips? They're not as tasty as the regular ones are. They're bland and, frankly, they're kind of ho-hum on the snack food experience. And I know a lot of people who have had to reduce their salt intake due to medical reasons, which is completely valid. And of all the people I've spoken with about it, they told me the same thing about those low or no salt versions of potato chips. They're not the same, so they just give up eating them because black. Now, some people with salt, like my mom, add salt to fruits like watermelon and cantaloupe because it makes the fruit have a stronger fruit taste to it. 
And really, the salt isn't adding the flavor to it. Instead, the salt breaks down the cell walls in the fruits, the veggies, and the meats. And as the cells break down, the unique smell and the flavor of the food is released. Pretty cool, right? It's cool. I like it. Now, there's also a saying about being salty. Ooh, somebody's really a salty person, right? Now, in the U.S. Navy, for instance, being salty describes somebody who's easily gets upset over something, who's cranky, irritable, or resentful of a lot of things. You know the kind of person I'm talking about, right? There's always the one. Now, this week's gospel lesson flips what we know about being salty. Bibles are good at that. You see, being salty in the Bible is the exact opposite of what salty in the Navy is. To be salty means that we are to be a seasoning agent that spreads the gospel as Jesus' disciples did. And in doing so, when we spread that gospel, we are seasoning the community and the people around us, enhancing life with God's grace and God's love, generously sprinkled around and felt by others. And to have salt in ourselves means that believers in Jesus Christ, like us, are each unique. We're different from anybody else in the world. No other spice or flavoring tastes like salt. Salt has its own unique flavor. So when we as believers are really salty, we're living our lives with gusto, with excitement and passion about our faith, sharing our faith in our words and in our actions. Salt is also a preservative. Anybody like beef jerky? Oh, it's fantastic. Beef jerky or any other meat that's made into jerky is cured with salt. And it's delicious. Salt also keeps things from going bad. Salt also cleans and disinfects. Now think for a moment if you ever swam in the ocean and you had a cut. It burns a little bit when that salt water gets into those sores, right? Can you imagine using salt to clean and disinfect a wound? They did that in the Bible. Those people must have been tough. Oh, ouch. Salt preserves. Now, here's the thing. Believers in Jesus Christ are to share our faith in our saltiness, praying and working for the good of God's kingdom, in essence, helping to preserve and help keep the world a better place to live so that life can be enjoyed by more people. Now, as I said earlier, salt enhances the flavor of fruits and vegetables and meat. And it does so by penetrating those cell walls. And it brings the taste of the food to new life. It changes it to a better quality of taste. So food that would be dull and bland, like a potato chip with no salt, changes into something mighty tasty. And when believers in Christ are salty then, we penetrate the world and insert new life into the world. Salt influences and enhances the taste of things. Being salty means that we flavor the world. We influence it with Jesus and his love. Believers are flavoring the world and influencing the world with Christ's message and his love. So we get to go out into the world, moving around and being salty. And being salty means that we go out from this place and season everywhere we go. You don't just stop seasoning when you get out the door and into your car and go to your restaurant or when you go home and play or whatever you're doing. You season when you go out into the world. Sprinkling God's love in our homes and with our families and friends at school or work, playing sports or spending time in the community and volunteering and doing the various things that we all do out there. Salt doesn't do any good just sitting in the salt shaker or on a shelf. It just sits there. But see, salt really works when it's put onto something to change what it's put on and spread around. When we're salty, we are seasoning the whole community with God's love, using that salt. 
And if we're going to be active, salty believers of Christ, we must have salt in ourselves. Mark 9, verse 50 says, salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. So in order for us to salt the earth, we must get that salt from somewhere. And we get that from reading the Bible, coming to church to hear God's word, read and preached, praying on our own and as a community together, singing hymns of praise for Jesus. These are all ways that we get our salt refilled so that we can take it out into the world. And as believers living out our Christian faith according to what the Bible teaches us in our words and our actions, that helps us to salt the community all around us because we can't give salt if we don't have any to give ourselves. And salt needs to be scattered out into the world, seasoning all sorts of people and communities, taking care not to lose our saltiness as we go along so that we can share God's word with all whom we encounter in our lives. Christians, believers in Christ, aren't called to be bland and humdrum like a no-salt potato chip. Believers in Christ are to be dynamic, unique, salty people who help enhance the world and others who are around us. To be a salty Christian means that we share our salt with others. We don't store it all up for ourselves, but instead, we pour that salt out generously. Amen. Gracious God, you bless us with gifts of guidance, new life, growth in grace, and fruitful labor. Accept the first fruits of time and toil, field and orchard we offer here. Bless and multiply these gifts to our nurture and the care of your creation. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. And I do want to thank all of you for your generous offerings that support the ministries here at our congregation as we share our saltiness with our community and with the world. We really appreciate it. And Grace, thank you for, for that.
Interesting rendition on You're Our Healer. She didn't have a lot of time to practice to get ready today. It's good. You're awesome. In our prayers, we do include those who are on our prayer list. Bob and Jan, Rosemary, Kathy, Sharon, Ralph, and Marvin. Are there others that you would like to include in our prayers this day? Thank you. Got it. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Dalton, got it. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any others? May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church and its ministry. Bless the newly baptized and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for natural wonders of your creation, local waterways, forests, and parks. Restore damaged forests, waterways, and natural habitats, and lead us to be good stewards of what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those underserved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, or any other disease. We lift up those who are on our prayer list, those whom we named aloud, and of course, those who are in our hearts. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days and weeks ahead. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the worship leaders of this congregation, for church council, council musicians, readers, acolytes, and ushers, and all of our volunteers. Bless us through their ministry and grant them the passion to continue in their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your saints, those we have loved and known and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing. Actually, please stand. <laughs> yeah. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, with the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread. And he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, the banquet is ready. Come take your place at the holy feast. All are welcome to share in communion. Grape juice and gluten-free wafers are available as well. And those who um, do not take communion yet are welcome and encouraged to come forward as well for a blessing. Let's start um, with this side, having folks come up for communion, uh, the bread on this side and the cup over there.
Please stand if you are able. Let us pray together. We lift these words in prayer. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us join together and sing hymn number 509. Thank you.
Be salty, go in peace, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.